The Sierra Nevada Forest and Community Initiative is an effort being coordinated by the Sierra Nevada Conservancy with two primary objectives. The first is restoring our Sierra forest to ecological health. Um, that includes reducing the risk of catastrophic fire uh, and really taking other actions to make our forest healthy again, while at the same time creating local economic activity, jobs, in our Sierra communities that are sustainable and that are connected to managing healthy forests. We're going to do this through a collaborative, consensus-based process. We're going to bring a wide array of stakeholders together, many of whom have uh, not agreed much in the past on these issues, and really start with, what do we agree on? Where can we find uh, common ground and begin to move the process forward so that we do have healthy forests, that we do have vibrant communities? And um, we don't view this as an either-or. These do, are not mutually exclusive uh, goals. We think we can do it in a complementary fashion, and that's what the initiative is all about. really need to understand that the Sierra Nevada region is, is critical to California's economic and environmental well-being. This is the region where 65 percent of California's developed water supply originates. Uh, it's a region that's home to dozens of species, not only threatened and endangered species, but lots of species that are critical to our, our environmental health. Our forests in the Sierra Nevada sequester carbon. Uh, which is a critical issue in today's changing climate. They provide a place for recreation and for solace for so many Californians. And when you don't take care of the forest, when you don't care, take care of the watershed, those benefits are at risk. Um, you end up with these large damaging fires that, that send pollutants and uh, greenhouse gases into the air and result in erosion that ends up in our water, um, destroys habitat and certainly makes the areas uh, less suitable for uh, recreation and for people to get out into the, uh, into the woods. Taking care of the forest, uh, restoring health, and that means not only reducing the risk of fire, but that means doing things like restoring our meadow system, which are critical to, the, to California's water supply, healthy meadows functioning as nature's sponge, if you will. It's critically important, not just to those of us who live and work in the Sierra Nevada, but to all Californians. The way we're approaching this initiative is, is really uh, on two fronts. Uh, first, we have a regional focus. We're convening what we're calling a coordinating council of all of the interests that I talked about uh, who are supporting our effort. And they're going to address policy, investment, um, science and research issues. It's really looking at a regional level of what are the things that can affect our success on the ground. Uh, and that'll be an important focus. It's really not one uh, that has been there before from this region's perspective. So on the one front, we'll be looking uh, very much at, at kind of the bigger picture issues. Um, at the same time, and equally as important, are local efforts, local collaborative efforts, some of which we've already been involved in, but uh, others which we know we will be involved in to really try to have communities and those in the communities and in the watershed answer the question of what do we want to do? What can we agree upon here that's going to uh, help us achieve objectives of healthy forest and vibrant communities? And that's going to vary from watershed to watershed, from community to community. Some of our communities still have a fair amount of the traditional infrastructure, mills and biomass energy facilities, et cetera, in place, but a lot of them don't. Those are closed and those are gone. And so it's going to take a little different approach uh, in each of these. And what we hope to do is provide the convening, the facilitating, and to bring some information to bear that will help um, folks at the local level uh, make decisions that are best for them and really fit those local needs. Uh, we don't go into this believing that the Conservancy's got the answers, but we think we can help folks come up with the answers, both at a local level and at a regional level. The initiative talks about forest health, it talks about community economic health, and in my mind these go together because where you have healthy forests and where you have uh, private contractors and the Forest Service working together uh, to thin the forest, uh, to, to create uh, logs for the lumber mills, biomass for the cogeneration plants. You have jobs, uh, you have healthier forests, and you also address the, the safety of the firefighters who have to go into these overgrown forests to fight these fires.
On the Sierraville District, uh, which is the only district in the Tahoe National Forest that's a part of the Herger Feinstein Quincy Library Group project, uh, they have had success with their fuel reduction programs. They've had success building DFPZs, which are the defensible fuel profile zones around the communities uh, on that district. And I would like to see the Conservancy and this uh, initiative effort look to some of the uh, principles that have been used not only in Sierraville but also in other districts within the Herger Feinstein project uh, to look to them for tactics and, and procedures and, and the things that they've done uh, that have worked. One of the things we've been involved with uh, at the Conservancy is something that's called the Amador Calaveras Consensus Group uh, in the McCollumie River watershed. Um, and again, parties have come together who haven't always come together to, to try to address these issues. Um, and started with the basic question of what can we agree upon. Um, and it took some time, but we got to a place where I think all of the parties had some areas of agreement. Um, thinning forest where there are really plantations. They were planted years ago and have not been managed in any way became one area that everybody agreed was needed. Working around communities and ensuring that communities are safe and working around um, evacuation routes. So we found some common ground and now projects are happening on the ground. Work is actually occurring to reduce that risk, reduce that loading, to make the forest healthier again. And that's I think a really good example of how we hope this works. I know there are people out there that have spent a long time, just as we have, fighting about whether the environment or whether economic development or whether uh, bringing people, uh, communities to, to fire safety or water issues or whatever the issue might be, that their issue is the most important and we fight about that all the time. Uh, but I can tell you that we were as conflicted and litigated as any other place in California, and we found a way to come together, partly through the Sierra Nevada Conservancy's leadership and partly because we just had no other option. Uh, but we came together because we had a lot of work to do, saw a mission, and ultimately by asking each individual group, uh, how's it going out there? Uh, environmental concerns had not been met. Economic concerns had not been met, and our communities were in a state of disarray and disintegration and displacement that was unprecedented. Uh, time to get back to work all around California. If we can do it in our poverty-stricken and hard-pressed communities, I don't see any place in the Sierra that has an excuse not to. So we have another collaborative around the Sierra National Forest Yosemite Park area, the Sustainable Forests and Communities Collaborative. Diverse stakeholders, what they're really needing in that area is the infrastructure. In the Southern Sierra, there is very little infrastructure to address the materials once they leave the woods. You need areas to process and ideally add value to the wood so you can turn it into a product, create jobs, and generate some revenue for these local communities. So most recently what we've done is identified some specific areas where we can have multiple businesses located near one another and have the biomass delivered to that particular area. The idea is that we would help local entrepreneurs actually go through the business plan, development, permitting, feasibility studies, whatever it takes to move a viable, great idea to a business. And in, in so doing that, you're creating jobs, you're diversifying your economy, and you're adding value. I mean, we have this incredible resource. Right now, it's a threat to all of us in the form of fire and degrading our watersheds. What we want to turn, what we want to do is improve the health of the watershed, but turn this resource into opportunities for our local communities. My name is Eric Robertson, and I'm the owner of Alpine Sierra Green Cycling at the historic North Fork Mill site. A little over a year ago, we started uh, meeting with the Sierra Nevada Conservancy when they came to Oakhurst and had a, they had a webinar, and we attended that, and we started talking about the possibility of having a biomass sort yard inside of this abandoned mill site, which has been uh, empty for almost 20 years, and it used to be the, uh, the largest employer in this community uh, when they had a commercial sawmill going here. 
And so since we've been able to uh, develop this sort yard, bring materials from the forest, uh, have the public drop off materials, we've been able to uh, create jobs that haven't existed here in 20 years. So the citizens of North Fork and, and the residents of Eastern Madera County as a whole are really excited about this facility because we think we can bring 25 jobs here this year with just the activities that we have planned for 2011. A few more decades of paralysis will, will result in a catastrophe much greater than we're able to deal with as a species. It's time to get back to work together and there's absolutely no reason why we can't with an, uh, an organization like Sierra Nevada Conservancy, with the Sierra Nevada Forest and Communities Initiative. These are big events. These are big opportunities for people to put down the cudgels of the past to get on together with the kind of work that we can agree on. The fate and condition of the mountain range is at a place where we could spend more time struggling and arguing with each other and wake up 5, 10, 20 years from now and, and see the unraveling of the very mountain range that we all care about. And so I think part of it is a mutual recognition of that, that we need to sit down and really dive deep into how we're going to resolve some of the places that we've been disagreeing for 25 years and move beyond them in ways that are constructive to be able to get restoration work done in the mountain range. And time is critical. One of the things I get to do in, in my job is I spend virtually all of my time in this magnificent Sierra Nevada region. And I think when you're out there, whether it's looking at some incredible panoramic view, um, whether it's being in a community um, with the people that, that live in and, um, and work in this region, uh, you come away with the, the strong feeling that this is obviously a special place. And we can do better than we've been doing. We simply can't accept that uh, the status quo is the way we're going to go and continue to watch these magnificent communities suffer, as well as this incredible landscape um, really in many instances be devastated. And, and I think it's the least we can do for future generations to try to figure this out and to try to go forward in a different way. And if you've spent any time in the Sierra Nevada, I probably don't even need to say this because you get it. Recognizing all of the benefits that flow from this region, from water to clean air to storing carbon to habitat to the recreational opportunities, um, we just can't fail. We've got to do better and, and I'm confident that we will. Thank you.